Hello, 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 hello. I hope the microphone is working. And there is me. Welcome. Welcome to part two of our small little cozy live stream where we're going to take a look at this car again. We already have a few people here in the chat. Hello, chat. And thank you for, for the kind words. I appreciate them. I think we can begin, right? So, last time, uh, last time around we finished up with this. <laughs> this kind of an object. And it's nothing too fancy, but the topology is uh, the topology is quite quite good, I think, and we can kind of continue on working with with it. Hmm. Anyway, so now oh, hmm, let's think. What's the plan for 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 today? Hmm. Yeah, let's just keep adding macro detail. So basically, when I'm thinking about this design, this this car in particular. I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about the design in three different scales. So there's macro, which is basically the overall shape. You know how does the silhouette of the car look like from the uh, from the side? How does it look like from the front? How does it look like from the top? Uh, of course, the back as well. But then there's also the meso scale, the middle one, which is you know all, all of these ridges here and the, the the back being pushed in and so on so that's the meso scale i believe you know these kind of cuts here could also be considered meso scale and then you have the micro scale which is going to be for that i need to show you in a reference it's going to be all of these small seams here right small seams between the panels small incisions, small patterns, uh, hydraulics, what, what, whatever have you. Uh, so that's going to be micro scale. Um, right now, for the first at least five or six hours of, of work, I'm not going to work with uh, uh, micro scale at all. I'm not going to even, I'm not even going to take a look at it. Uh, we're just going to work with macro and meso scale, and I think last time we kind of we kind of finished with uh, with the macro scale. I might change a few things, but I I like the shape. So now let's start adding bits of details here and there. Where do we begin? Shall we do something with the front or the side? Hmm. Maybe this this area right here. <clears throat> yeah, let's try it with with this area right here. So here everything is flat, and I'm not sure if I want it to be flat like that. Um, so let me go to sub details and just. I need now need to remember it again <laughs> how to use this uh, cell loop. No, cell edge loop. There we go. So I'm just going to sell. Oh, that's the wrong edge loop to se select. I'm going to select this edge loop here and then choose um, insert, insert edge and just insert an additional edge loop right here. Hmm. It messes up there though. It's strange that we can't really... Um, why can't we have an edge loop that's right in the middle, right in, right in between this one and this one? Maybe we can, maybe I just don't know how to do it. Let me try. Repair sub D, toggle sub D display. So that's that. Edge ring. Hmm doesn't seem like there's an option for that. Mode range or mode full? Hmm. 
Okay, Let, let's try. Let's try it this way. So select edge loop. Let's select this bad boy here. Um, insert edge and let's see both sides no. Offset mode absolute. Mm, op proportional. Okay, so if offset mode is proportional, oh, there we go. Yay, we figured it out. So this is what I found. If when we insert the edge, another edge loop, if offset mode is set to absolute, then it's going to kind of like offset the new edge from the edge loop that was selected, right? So it's going to be like a locked uh, distance. If we choose offset mode to be proportional, then it's going to kind of count uh, the distance to the next edge loop and it's going to always find, let's say, the midpoint, right? So the new edge loop here is going to always go through the midpoints, which is perfect. This is what we wanted. Okay, good. Um, how do I find comparison to T-Splines plugin? Um, oh, by the way, UN Studio are doing great stuff, but that's, I guess that's not, not, not the case now. Um, T-Splines plugin, how do I find uh, the comparison to it? Well, right now, SubD is really young. Let's say it like that. So it, it does have the potential to be really strong, but it's still pretty, pretty damn young. Uh, from what I see here, oops, wrong side. From what I see here, uh, like just working with it, it seems to be quite... Uh, quite a strong plugin. Not plugin, but uh, quite a strong toolset. But of course, uh, T-Splines was better. Yeah, th there's no denying it. T-Splines were better. But I think the potential is here, for sure. So this would make it thicker. Do we want it thicker, though? Maybe we don't. What if it goes inside like that? Nah, that looks like crap. Yeah, okay, so for now, let me keep it. Uh, just just keep the information there as it is. Um, that additional edge loop. Instead, let's see, where is that slidey thing? Insert edge, bevel. What does bevel do? Um, bevel. Okay, I select this one. Ah, okay, so Bevel does that, adds segments. Will we be able to use that? We will. I think we will. Yeah, that, that, that should be pretty good if we were to... If we were to try and create sharp edges, then Beveling would be the way to go, I think. But uh, we're going to be doing that a little bit later on. Uh, later down the line, I mean. So for now, let's just think. Time for some inspiration. So what if this point right here slides? Is there like a slide? Yeah, there is a slide command. So this point slides in here. This point slides right here. It's a little bit, the music is a little bit loud. Just a second. There we go. Oop. So we slide those two points and maybe we slide this edge. Can we slide an edge? Slide. Yes, yes we can. So we have that kind of a situation going on. And you can see that since I've added a lot of edges here, one, two, three, the seam becomes quite sharp in here, uh, which I, I think is, is fine. Uh, we will manage the sharpness of the seams later on. <clears throat> so we have that going on. And I want, I want this, um, just this or also that. Yeah, I want this, this, 
this and that to go in, to go inwards, like so. So then we get this really sharp ridge here. Looks bad. We will need to fix it. So let me undo that and take a, an, a, another look at this. Hmm. I don't really like how the edges look here in, in, uh, on, on this particular like back, back side of the car. The edges look like complete garbage. So I think we need to fix it. So let me just draw a, a line here. Um, yeah, from here to here, just a line. Um, and then we have one, two, three, four, five points. So let me divide this this line to four segments so that we have five points here. And then I believe I can just, oops, I can just grab this point, move to here. Um, grab this point, move to here. Grab this point, move to here. So now, cell PT, delete. So now all of these are kind of, they, they're spaced out um, properly, which is what we want. Doesn't look good, but that's fine. We will make it look good. <laughs> We will force it to look good. So we have that. What if we move this slightly up to release the tension a little bit? I think that's that's good. And this one moves in like that. Then it produces this ridge here, which for some reason this ridge right here is super, like, super smooth. Well, not some reason, I, I know why. We need to fix that. How do we fix that? Let's undo that. I want this to be uh, much sharper, like the transition to be much sharper, but not too sharp, right? I could just say, um, Sub D tools, select, oops, what the hell did I just select? No, sub D tools, uh, select edge loop and select this edge loop, right? And then I could chamfer that edge loop um, just a little bit like that. And then of course, you know, the, the edge would become sharper, right? Maybe that's that's what we should do. Because an alternative would be to select the edge loop like that, and then choose to crease it. And then it's going to kind of do this, which we also don't don't really want. Well, wait. Let let's see how it looks like first. Um, let's select another edge loop here and crease that one as well. So that's how it behaves. I don't think I like it. No, I don't like it at all. So we will be undoing it. Okay. Let's stick to to the edge loops, actually. Uh, sorry, to, to adding more edge loops to introduce more horizontal lines. I don't want it to be like completely uh, straight lines like here. I think that's not necessary, but I do want it to be a little bit more uh, pronounced, a little bit more controlled. This edge loop here, this edge loop here, and this edge loop here. Um, still not sure if this is the time to do it though. Mm, contemplating it. What if we move this up a bit? 
so that it becomes thicker. And then we take this and move it down so that it becomes like that. And this one a little bit higher up. Mm -hmm. That's a bit better, I think. Do we need to move this up as well? Let's try. Let's try moving this up to release the tension here. And also to release the tension here a bit more. Okay, so now it became softer. And it's still doing the wave inwards, but, but now it's, it's, it's much, much softer. So my thoughts are... My thoughts are... Yeah, I'll, I'll mess around with it a bit more. So this, uh, this, ugh, come on, just give me <laughs> this, this, and that. These three edges here. Uh, or should it be these two as well? No, just these three. These three edges should be scaled down to zero so that all of them are in the same plane and all of them are horizontal, like perfectly horizontal. Okay, so that's clean. Then we have this ridge here, which this will need to slide, first of all, this point. No, 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 slide along this. Could you please slide? Or maybe we can do it this way, slide. Ah, there we go. So this needs to slide pretty close to this ridge here. Oh, cool. Hong Kong. It's, wait, uh, it's pretty late in Hong Kong now, isn't it? Or no, maybe it's not that late. It's like nine o'clock, right? Mm, right. So we have that ridge going on here. Which, which I like. I'm contemplating if we should have everything running here into one point, or should this these two points be on, on a vertical axis? Maybe they should. Yeah, let's try doing that. <clears throat> so I'm going to take these two points and scale them down to zero so that they're vertical. And also, I'm going to take these two points and scale them to, up, 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 uh, to zero so that they are vertical as well. And now I have a little bit more control. Oh, also these two need to be scaled down then to zero. Well, as I'm at it, let me just take this. Um, sorry, let me just take this. Come on, come on this and this, these two curves and just check. Yeah, they are horizontal to one another. That's perfect. So we have that, which means I can take this curve and scale it to zero, straighten it out. Take this curve, this, this is already straight. Perfect. So this is clean. This is what I would consider clean. This is of course not. So we can straighten this out as well just a little bit okay I'll, I'll mess around with these lines later on later down the line so we have that and maybe this can be moved down let's see how it smooths out yeah i think it's, it's smoothing out properly once we add more edge loops it's gonna look fine it's gonna be good um, I do want to fix uh, this this whole area here. It's bugging me. I, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it that it's so um, unclean, so to say. Uh, so let me just draw two helplines. Select this point here. Oh, come on. Can I just snap you? Move to perpendicular. There we go. And you as well. Move. 
to uh, move to perpendicular. It's not perfect here, but it should, yeah, it, it smooths out into a straight line now, which which is good, which is great. Um, this point right here will need to slide properly, probably, properly, probably, or not. No, let it be twisted, that's fine. We will fix that later. So that's good. And the last thing of the boring stuff is going to be this edge right here, this line right here, and we're going to kind of draw a few helper lines. Maybe I should, uh, just for clarity's sake, I'll create a new layer, call it helper, and make it red or blue so that uh, you guys can see what I'm, you know, what I'm using as helper lines better. So that's gonna be my, oh, pfft, that's gonna be my helper line. There we go. And I'm just gonna draw a perpendicular line here, like so. Perpendicular line here, like so. And then all I need to do is just points on, select this bad boy, move it here, select this bad boy, move it here, that's it. That's good enough. Um, not sure if the tension here is correct. Maybe it's not, but uh, we will we will fix it later down the line. Perhaps it's only this area right here that needs to be kind of increased. Okay, cell CRV, select curves, delete to get rid of them, smooth it out. This is much cleaner than it was before. I, I like how this smooths out. Will the object transition from medium soft to hard surface geometry from front to back? Similar to the picture. Mm. I'm trying to understand what you what you ask. Oh, um, are you asking if if my aim is to have this object similar to to what I have in the um, in the references? No, not at all. I'm just using the references as inspiration. Um, just that. So it's just um, you know inspiration of, of of guidance where I want to go with this particular uh, vehicle, but. The, the the sharpness is uh, don't 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 care like sharpness wise I think mm, to a certain extent you need to switch between sub D modeling and regular uh, CAD modeling to to work with sharp edges and sharp objects sub D modeling is not perfect for that um, but 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 uh, with with sub modeling, you can get away with a lot of like with this very very clean continuous surface that I'm trying to to make and also I'm just learning sub modeling in general so um, I'm gonna kind of stick to it I think that looks good let's make something more fun because uh, this is becoming boring uh, well not necessarily boring but it it you know uh, it is what it is <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm getting bored clean, cleaning up the topology. So let me just select these edges here. Ah, oh, come on. I'm not sure how, how many though. Maybe just these ones. Yeah. Yeah, just these ones. I'll select them and I will... What will I do with them? I will extrude them. Extrude. Uh, is there like extrude sub D? Yes, there is. Extrude sub D. Uh, extrude sub D, direction Z. I want to extrude them upwards. And the uh, height doesn't matter. Um, so I extrude them once. And then I want to select them again and 
extrude sub D, extrude them again. Do I want to do that though? Maybe I want to offset them. Let's check how offset works actually, because we haven't checked that tool, uh, like uh, sub D offset, how, how that works, because we haven't checked it. So let's see if I have these objects right here. Can I just use offset on them? Select sub D objects to offset. Uh, oh, oh, it's literally for the whole damn sub D geometry. It doesn't work with faces. So we stick with extrude sub D upwards, select them again, extrude sub D upwards again. Bow. You might be thinking, what the hell is he doing, <laughs> right? Um, actually, I want to make a, uh, put them in, in, inside, like, like make an in, incision. So what I'm going to be doing now is using Control Shift, I'll select the whole top side and I will scale it down, holding down the Shift key so that, that it scales down uniformly. I'll scale it down to 0 0.9. And then I will move, enter, vertical, V, enter. And I'll just move it back to the correct height, right? So now we have what's essentially an offset inwards or an inset inwards, right? Of our uh, subdivided geometry, which means that now I can select these guys, the top, and I can move it down like that. Got it? Now we have something like this. <laughs> Hello to London. Um, is there a slider control for the amount of smoothness that you get from sub -demoling? No, there is not. And actually this is something that I can I can show you, if you guys don't have uh, Rhino 7, if you're working with Rhino 5 or Rhino 6, you can still use, um, you can mimic sub D modeling because the, I, I will show you how it works. Small tutorial, I guess. Um, so of course you need Grasshopper for that. And let me just create a mesh component in Grasshopper. Uh, let me just, uh, wh where do we put it? Let's just put it there. And for that mesh component, I will, I will create a mesh, right? So let's go for uh, mesh tools and just create a cube mesh box, right? Something like that. Mesh box. Oh, that's, that's a lot of polygons. No, no, no. Again, mesh box, but this time, um, sorry, but this time I will say that X count is one, Y count is one, Z count is one. That's how many polygons it makes, right? So I just create a box. It should be a cube, but I don't care for this particular example, right? So it's a mesh. So I reference it in, set one mesh. I just reference it in. Let's hide it. Uh, and basically, if I just grab a panel and check what it is, it's it's a mesh that has 24 vertices and six faces, right? If I then say, yo, take every, let me scribble here. I'll just use this as my sketch pad. If I say that for every polygon, for every polygon of this box, find the center point of each edge like that and connect it with the opposite center point, right? We eventually, oh, grasshopper window not visible. You guys are slow in telling, telling me that. <laughs> okay, uh, wait. Super ghetto stream. Um, Window capture, there we go. Bam, bam, bam. 
Grasshopper. Okay. Yep. Beep. Eh. Yep. Okay. That that should be good enough, I think. So where was I? We did a box, right? We did a box. We referenced it in as a mesh component, and I just hooked up a hooked up a panel here. Um, I don't have. Yeah, the problem is that I don't have a second monitor right now, so I don't see <laughs> what you guys see, which makes it this whole tutorial thing a whole lot more awkward. Either way, so we have uh, six faces, of course, because it's a box, and we just for every face we need to say give me midpoint here, give me midpoint here, of, of, of the surrounding edges, give me midpoint here and midpoint here, and connect opposing midpoints, right? So virtually what happens is for every face, uh, we get four faces, right? We subdivide it. And that's how subdivision works. And then we can say, well, for those four faces also, give me midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here, and midpoint here right and draw like the like not draw but subdivide with opposing edges right so virtually then we get 16 and and so on so it's it, it's always times 4 uh, to the not to the power of 4 but rather times 4 uh, faces so this is uh, how catmull clark subdivision works in case of a flat um uh, of a flat polygon this this is simple right but when you have four polygons that uh that make up some sort of a oops <laughs> that's my bad some sort of an angle perfect you know there's some sort of an angle here this vertice right here as you're as you're subdividing those polygons this vertice right here will move to the average of these vertices here, which makes it all smooth, smooth right? It, it makes it smooth out. So virtually here with this box, if I do that kind of subdivision, which is called, by the way, catmull clark subdivision, catmull clark subdivision, uh, that's the yellow one. I don't want the yellow one. Uh, let's just go to Viverbird. Oh, maybe I don't have Viverbird here. Crap. Shit. Uh, hmm. I don't have your bird here installed. Well, let's then do the other. I, I have another plugin that's uh, Catmull Clark sub subdivision. Like that. Bam. Um, level. Yeah. Edge type. Why are you not showing? Oh, you are showing. Okay. So basically after that subdivision, our box looks like that. Display, um, preview mesh edges, there we go. So ev every phase becomes four faces. So six times four is 24 and we do have 24 faces. Um, this one, this, this uh, tool right here has more uh, inputs. Uh, which we don't really care about. In, in, in case of Viewerbird's tool, it will only ask you for, for the level of subdivision. So that's level one. Level two would look like this, right? Level three would look, or level three would look like this, right? So it becomes a sphere because if you smooth a cube, it will become a sphere. And then there's a bunch of other not so interesting stuff. So why am I showing you this? Well, if we take this shape here, right? And we say, um, can we do a quad mesh from it, by the way? Or do we just simply... Because basically you can treat all of these segments, of these segments as quads, right? I'm just thinking how to, is there a way of how to do a quad mesh from here? P, 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 P. Sub tools, 
convert to sub D, convert object to NURBS, but there's no like convert to quad mesh, or is there? To, uh, okay, sub D. To sub D. Hmm. Does every, anyone know? Does anyone know how to convert a sub D object to a mesh? There's like quadri mesh, but. Hmm. Because I could do, do it this way, I guess. I could... Um, can I explode it, by the way? No, I can't explode it. That's cool. Oh, come on, guys. Uh, merge faces, reflect, delete faces. Oops, that, that's, that's a bad button there. Toggle sub D display. Can, uh, okay, what if I just say mesh? Okay. So mesh does that, huh? No, I, that, that's not what I want. I want this to be a low resolution mesh. I want to get it straight from... <laughs> this is becoming quite a tangent. Why not use quadri mesh? Because it's going to mess up my uh, my topology. We can try. Quite. Uh, whoops. Quad remesh. Target quad target quad count a hundred. Okay, it's doing its its magic, but it's going to mess it up because it's going to use the smooth version of the. call it it's going to use the smooth version of of the sub d as its uh, guiding geometry and also why the heck does it take that long come on load 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 people are watching there we go so that's the that's the quad remesh thing i mean the topology is great honestly the topology is good but it's not what i'm after i'm after this as a Precisely as uh, a, a mesh. While this is sub D here, um, let me add to the script a bit. Sub D. Oops. Sub D. Set one sub D. So so it gets set here. Hide, and of course it gets smoothed out. Whether. Uh, I'm losing my mind here. One more minute. If I don't figure it out in a minute, we will just call it uh, call it a day with with this example here. Mm, what can we use? Actually, where are all of the sub D tools? Sub D. So the control polygon, we do have that. Is that a mesh? Yes, it's a mesh. I'm so fucking smart. Okay, so that's a mesh that is not smoothed and that can be used. So this mesh is identical to, to this sub D. And then we can just run it into our Catmull Clark subdivision and uh, bake out our output. As a default, take a look at it here. Of course, it's not going to understand what creases are, but other than that, it's going to be a map. Yeah, good enough. It's going to be a pretty damn close representation of of the shape, right? So this took a while to to explain, but all in all, what 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 I was trying to get at is that if you model um, 
with a quad mesh and then you apply a Catmull Clark subdivision on it, it's going to look exactly as if uh, you did a, 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 a sub D model, right? Except for creases. In, in case of creases, you would need to specify um, that these crease, uh, like you would need to crease it um, se separately. So, so it would be a little bit harder to do. But uh, as I mentioned before, creases can be formed by adding more loops instead of giving it a sharp edge. Okay, enough of that. That was awkward. Let me close this. Um, let me see if I need to... I do need to probably hide the window here and remove professional streamer, by the way. There we go. Okay, we're back to modeling. Whew. Let us let us work on the front a bit, cause damn, damn, that's an ugly front. Um, what are we gonna do with the front? Is there like a so this one is like a Lamborghini uh, front, right? Nothing too, nothing too fancy. Do we search for a cool... Mm, nah. For now, let's just make it, uh, make it weird and then we will uh, figure it out later on <laughs> what we actually want to do with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I will say this, this, this and that needs to be extruded again of course extrude sub d uh but this time the direction needs to be oh, let, let's see let's see how we can what kind of extrusion options we have oh how did i straighten the lines uh that's a pretty cool trick that 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 i saw some people use in blender and i started using it in um in rhino as well so actually let's let's do it this way so let's say you have a, a very simple example let's say you have uh, almost straight line right almost straight line um that that you want to that you want to straighten out um, then one way would be to draw a guideline right grab all the control points and do the do the thing right uh, where you move the control points and snap them to you know to to the straight line or or you can take all of the uh, you can take the the, the the line and take the control points that you want to straighten let's say these three only these three right and then you scale it with the gumball you scale them to zero in that particular direction in which you want to straighten it out right so all of them scale to they, they, they don't have any and any, any more um the, the, their dimension cumulative dimension in that particular on that particular axis is zero meaning that they are on the straight line in that particular axis so what i'm doing uh, when i say i i want to straighten out let's see these uh, these polygons here i just select them and i scale them to zero oh, okay let's try again. <laughs> let's try again i select them and I scale them to zero. Oh, right, uh, wrong side. This is my mirror side. Sorry. Select them. Scale them to zero. There we go. Right, so, so that they are neat and tidy. Okay, back to here. Uh, one, two, three, uh, come on. One, two, three, four. 
there we go. Um, and we wanted to check out what the ex what extrude does and what kind of op options we have for extrude. So basis, WCS, world center, center scale, uh, what does Google time, what does WCS mean? In CAD. Of course, world coordinate system, duh. You guys didn't know that? What do you mean? Um, so, and then we have UVN, which is basically U direction, V direction, and normal. So we can specify the direction is normal and the extrusion is super weird. Why is it super weird? Shouldn't extrude like that. Oh, does it use every point? Like it uses a point, a, a normal. Okay, I, I have an explanation for this. Uh, when I extrude, now I've extruded it, right? And the reason why this point kind of extruded properly, right? But this one extruded in a weird angle is that it finds a normal, like a perpendicular vector to each point and moves it, right? Rather than finding an average vector of all these four points and moving that face along, along it. So uh, honestly, this is not usable for me. Like uh, I can't use that kind of extrusion and it's pff, what the hell are people in McNeil thinking? Uh, extrude sub D, we use world coordinate system, we use direction uh, X and we just extrude it like normal people like that. Um, I will be using a clipping plane just to check what the heck is going on with my extrusion just to see yeah okay good so that, that there's a double edge there that's perfect um that that's actually what i want so i'll be doing that uh, i will be scaling it to 0 0.9 inwards like that and moving it in moving it in some more A little bit too deep like that that's perfect and now I need to fix this whole mess that's happened here or actually maybe we can okay let me undo it uh, what if we what if we scale when we scale what if we scale this whole damn thing 0 0.9 ah there we go so we don't need to deal with the edge the, the, the seam in between and now we move it in bam like that like that that's good and then we extrude sub d we extrude it in like this so we end up with something like that which i think is not 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 too bad um let's move it move it back in just a tiny bit and now i actually want to get the center point here oh that edge right there needs to move up and how do we move it up to have a proper or maybe it needs to move down actually up or down up or down um like it would be definitely logical that um this whole thing is moving up rather than down of course but i think down would be a more interesting look so let's do down um how do we do it time for some coffee and good old-fashioned thinking figure it out okay so we get this edge here we get this edge here 
and we move them down but we move them down no we need to slide them down and we will need to do it in the wireframe view which is going to be disgusting to use but uh, it is what it is um, so we will slide and of course it doesn't let us slide I'm thinking um, 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 okay time for some helper lines so you probably noticed that I only use helper lines when I get stuck because uh, usually I try to do uh, do it all without actually needing to use helper lines but it is what it is right now so one helper line went in there and the other one goes in here okay and now we will turn on wireframe view and we see these two helper lines here i will take this one and i will extend um extend to this line this line here bam okay so basically what i want now can we go for ghosted view maybe that's going to be better without any back face coloring so what I want is I want to choose this line here uh, or edge and this edge here and I want to move them both from this point to this point here so in doing so the surface right here is parallel with the surface right here right so it's clean cell PT uh, no cell CRV enter delete enter okay shaded view this is how it looks like not great but not that bad we will need to fix that area there for sure looks horrible that that tension there this is really 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 bad but we will we will fix that and in a jiffy or actually we could do that now should we do that now maybe we should do that now let's do that now um, we will go to sub new tools we will choose or actually let's let's start memorizing the commands I think memorizing the commands is important so let's do cell edge loop we select the bottom one here and it doesn't select so we select edge loops and we select not the bottom one and it still doesn't select for some reason i messed up something something got messed up okay let's try again so this one selects as an edge loop this one selects as an edge loop this one doesn't so this edge right here is is problematic for some reason and that is why the bottom one also doesn't select as an edge loop even though it should come on rhino don't be weird good <laughs> come on rhino don't don't be weird can we just select this whole thing, align vertices, distance to adjust one millimeter, and just, okay, so no vertices were adjusted. So there are no duplicate vertices here, and it's still freaking out. Ah, uh, come on. I just need an edge loop. Just give me, um, okay. Cell edge loop, select the bottom one like that and then insert insert edge and i can okay so at least i can do that i can insert insert the edge um, right here so i'm going to to do this so there is like an additional edge loop here and now you can see how uh, crisper the whole bottom area becomes maybe even too crisp but we will 
uh, we will be adjusting that by just moving the points like that uh, by moving the points here like that right to to soften it up but for now let's let's keep it crisp okay that tension though here we will we will need to release that tension but i was working on the front so front 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 um maybe we can do something similar to this yeah let's let's do something similar to that so i will uh create a guideline here bam like that and what do we do with the guideline hmm this is going to be super awkward to to manipulate well for now let's let's just fix it here and then we will fix the topology the tension of topology everywhere else so here mm -hmm. <laughs> notes of light anxiety <laughs> oh this is um for uh, right now this this working method wait uh, let me just do it. this thing one two three four five um so divide uh, divide by four to just get uh, three points here and two in the start and the end of the of the line and let me do this i'll talk about working with this uh, particular tool set in just a second um we want to, we are working in shaded view, so I'll just go to shaded and I will choose uh, my objects, my curves to be thicker and my points to be bigger. Does that help? Let's try even thicker curves, three pixels. Yeah, I think that's that's better, right? Um, so anxiety. Here, there's no anxiety. It's just frustration a little bit, but at the same time, it's quite rewarding. It's it's quite nice. I, I don't know. I, I, I quite enjoy it uh, for, for what it is. Um, so move this moves in here no, no doesn't move shit um this edge this edge this edge or, or rather let's do it one by one this edge uh move from this point to this point it's the same thing as just using slide but i'm doing it um, in a precise manner from this point to this point and this edge right here move from this point to this point there we go so the spacing is now correct now i don't need the helper lines anymore so i can uh, sell um, sell pt delete uh, sell crv delete okay um let's do a grill right is it time though Maybe it's time. Let's do a grill. What kind of grill do we want to do? Do I, do we want to kind of have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or do we want to have four long ones? Mm, according to the design, I would say four long ones probably, right? So let's do that. <clears throat> Bam, that's the first one. And this is gonna take a while so strap on um extrude or is there like yeah we do need to extrude and do we extrude out like so we do extrude out right Wait, dad is thinking. Hmm. 
So I'll extrude it, I will scale it, I will extrude it again, I will move everything back in and then we will have a, a hole in a hole basically. And then I'll repeat it three more times. Simply because there is no proper option in Rhino to do it, to, to insert multiple polygons at once, or is there? Let's see. Um, sub D tools, inset, enter, no options. Inset distance five. Yeah, it insets separately. Shit. Come on, McNeil. We are paying money for this program. It's it's not a not a hard thing to implement. Group inset. Okay, anyway. Um, also, lady, I do like your voice, but please don't sing in the background. There we go. Okay, so extrude, sub D, extrude in, bam bam, scale, or not even scale, just use gumball 0 0.9 to scale, uh, move it back, back some more, and now that's the problem. I don't know how much to move it back, so I need to be vigilant about my extrusion, right? So extrude sub D, and I will need to do it. Okay, let's let's do it for all of them at once. So that that extrude out by we're doing it in millimeters. So let's say 500. That is not out by any stretch of imagination. What do you mean? Extrude, sub D, out, um, a thousand, okay, we need to use negative values, minus thousand, minus, hello, where's my minus sign, there we go, minus thousand, okay. And we will be doing that for all of these. Like that, minus a thousand. You come in here, extrude sub D, minus a thousand. And you extrude sub D, minus a thousand. Oh, this is super fun. <laughs> Trying to work around tools that don't work. Okay, so we have this now, and we will be scaling this to 0.9. Uh, we will be selecting these two and scaling them as well, 0.9. These two, scaling them, 0.9. I'm holding down the shift key, by the way, when I'm scaling, uh, so that it scales uniformly. So we have that, and then we will select all of these extrude sub d not extrude sorry um we still need to take these and move them back in so it's just going to be move along the x axis so i need to turn on my f8 my orthographic move and it needs to be a thousand oh my god that That's not even clean. Ah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have then these four guys going on. And now we should be able to extrude sub D and just simply extrude them in. And they don't extrude in. What do you mean? Does one extrude? Yes, one extrudes. Sometimes I don't, I don't even extrude sub D inwards. Um, should probably check 
out check it out in top view so something like that and that's gonna be like around 500 mil like that interesting interesting how it all just falls apart also that is a way to um these uh, these edges are way way too uh, too thin, but also all of this is duplicated now. So I will select this thing and I will say, yeah, and it even says open sub D. I will say align vertices. One millimeter is not enough. What do you mean? Uh, is it possible to select all of these edges and say remove the damn crease then? Uh, sub D tools, um, remove crease. Yes, it is, but there's, there's some ugly stuff going on there. I, I can see it. And I'm not sure if this is creased or not. Adding more creases. No, I, I want to remove. <laughs> For now, I want to remove the creases. I will be adding adding creases uh, maybe by the end of this live stream or uh, the next one. But for now, we we will not be messing around with creases. Why, for instance, why remove crease? Removed creases from one object. Still creased though. Yikes, Rhino, yikes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's think about this logically. So this is a mirrored version, right? This is a mirror of this. So what I can do is I can reapply the mirror and maybe it will fix it. Worth a try. So let's reflect some of the objects. I will reflect this one. Uh, and I will hit enter to use the current reflection plane. And I will hit enter again and hit tab and nothing fucking works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. I wonder which part messed up. Okay, so let's undo a lot of things. Well, not that many. Uh, I did redo. So is this... Okay, so this is all fucked up. Why is it fucked up? Looks fine here. And then if I check it with, uh, what's it called? No, let's reflect it uh, again to clean it up. Or try to reflect it at least. I said, oh my God, reflect, reflect. Select sub D to apply reflection, enter to use current reflection. Uh, snap to reflection plane, uh, automatic. Okay, still still screwed up. So for instance, wait, let's just see what happens. So this is a, a seam, right? And it, it messes up this area right here. So this whole thing is a seam. So it's misaligning. Then I have a question. If I take this point and move it out, what the hell? It, sol it solved it. So if I take this point and move it out, it solved this one. Take this point, move it out. Ah, it doesn't solve that one. Actually it does solve it. Yo, yo, McNeil. Yo, fix your 
Yo, 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 fix your shit. <laughs> the hell is going on? <laughs> My god. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cry. So this is breaking apart quite, quite nicely. Um, how do we deal with this? We can probably just do it this way. Like, I, I know that this is not an elegant solution, but let's just do it this way. Uh, just to save time. Uh, wait, let me just do change one thing. There we go. There we go. Right. Um, sub D tools. There's this single sub D face option here where I can click, 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 and uh, click to add the face, and I can join these bad boys up, hopefully. Join. Or not. Append. There, there was this append tool, I think. Append to sub D. Select meshes or sub D to append to. Uh, uh, here, enter. Pick point. Okay, so now at least we will know how this works. Um, append to sub D basically asks you to give it a sub D object. You hit enter. And then you specify by clicking multiple times. Let's try it again. By clicking, 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 and clicking. <laughs> Guys, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Okay, let's let's undo, 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 undo. Uh huh, uh huh, undo. Okay, let's just just chill. Um, let's try again. Extrude sub D minus a thousand. Okay, works, right? Does work. Now I'm doing everything like step by step and checking if it breaks or not. Extrude sub D minus a thousand. Extrude sub D minus a thousand. Does it still work? No, it stops working. So, okay, understood. So it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because it tries to be cheeky. And basically when we use here, when we use extrude sub D and we extrude by uh, minus a thousand again, it finds that point and it tries to be cheeky about it and, and merge everything. So it's trying to guess what we want to do, um, which is not great because it then guesses like so, <laughs> right? So it tries doing this kind of shit. Um, right. So inset doesn't work and it's forcing me to do all of this one by one, which is not ideal, but still fine. Okay, so zero, 0 0.9. Maybe you have to first inset and extrude. Yes, uh, it does exactly that. Um, so I do need to do it separately. The problem with inset is that it doesn't let me inset multiple faces at once, which really sucks. But perhaps we could... Hmm. 
no let, let's let's stick to this let's stick to this um there was one thought that i had but uh, let, let's for, for now work with what we have so this we scale 0 0.9 doesn't matter the scale for now and we move it back in by a thousand there we go and then we hit that extrude sub d button or or not no first we um, take this edge and this edge these two edges scale 1d from the middle point to this vertex here i will scale it down to let's go for 25 millimeters to something like that and then i will choose this edge right here and i will choose to extrude sub d backwards by 500 enter finally okay so that works of course it doesn't you know it looks like shit but it's gonna look fine i promise you'll see um because because we still don't have any um any sharp edges marked out once we do have that it's gonna look good so we do that again three more times okay um extrude sub d uh, minus a thousand um scale 0.9 oops scale both of these 0.9 move it back by a thousand scale 1d from midpoint to here i believe i used 25 right 25 so it's like that um extrude sub d 500 enter tab yeah that's gonna be fine cool huh super fun um but it 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 is still a clean super clean geometry which which i do like um extrude minus thousand i'll i'll i promise i'll, I'll try to do it as, as fast as possible after this i'll i don't know I'll, I'll want to play a video game or something like that um we'll see maybe i'll play a game at by the end of this uh, by the end of the stream <laughs> oops oh extrude yeah not move but extrude extrude x extrude sub d in the words 500 enter oh my god okay last one extrude sub d thousand no sorry minus a thousand select these both shift 0.9 move it back by a thousand scale 1d how's everyone doing this fine day you guys good Ugh. it's been a little bit of a of a shit show in terms of covid in lithuania extra sub d 500 so they closed all of the shops and then and so on it's super boring e map yeah i think that's that's fine that that looks okay i mean it's not great but but it is seamless okay good 
so we have that done. Should we, maybe we should already add a little bit of bizarre to this. So let me uh, select, is, is this round thing considered an edge loop, I think? Uh, edge, uh, cell, cell, edge loop. Let's select it. Yes, it is. Okay, super. So I'll select all these four edge loops here. So these four. And I will say that there was that chamfer option that I liked. Do we use chamfer though? Yeah, we should use chamfer probably. Mm, but I can't find it now. Ah, there it is. Bevel mesh or sub D. Okay, so bevel. So it does that. How does it do that? Let, let's, in, let's investigate. By the way, if the music is too loud if, or if my microphone is not picking me up, uh, picking up my, my voice, just let me know. So we have that. Huh? It's a bit wonky. Why is, oh, it's wonky. I know why. It is wonky because this edge, this edge, this edge, and not edge, face, needs to be, well, actually, it doesn't need to be that deep in. So let's move them back a bit. Something like this, maybe. And also, and also they need to go down so that um, it's, it's perpendicular to this face right here that you know the angle at which these grills go go in need to, I, I think they, they should go perpendicular to this face just to make it more nice nicer um, is it even possible to do it Let's check it out in Ghosted View. Yes, it should be. It should definitely be possible to do it. Okay, so we are going to work with it with some help helper lines. So there's one helper line there. And there's gonna be another helper line here that we are swiftly going to take from here and move it uh, to this point. So let me just hide the, the car for now. So we have these two guys here and we will fillet. Fillet them with radius of zero, bam, bam. So we end up with this little point here that is super important for us. Let me show again. What's the, oh, that's a lot of other stuff. Let me delete, <laughs> let me delete that stuff. Um, so we have that point there. And the reason why we have that point is that now I can select, shade at you, I can select these surfaces here, these back plates here, and I can move them. Let's look at it from the inside so this is from the inside out I can move them to fit with this point and what will happen when I do that is that the grill aligns with the bottom of the car with with the surface here right so it goes perfectly down cell CRV delete cell PT delete okay we're Gucci so this is like that now. I think that's good. What were we doing? Oh, we were chamfering. Okay, so now let's investigate how chamfer will, will work. Uh, cell edge, uh, edge loop, this guy here, chamfer. Nope, that's not a regular chamfer. So cell edge loop again. Come on, bam, there we go. Uh, yeah, I, I could use clipping plane, that's true. Because with clipping plane, I keep, <laughs> when I use clipping plane, 
I keep forgetting that I can turn off the the flat uh, infill of the clipping plane somewhere. Uh, is it under display? Show fills. Oh yeah, it's under display. Show fills. I can turn them off and then I can work with the clipping plane. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I'll probably do that. And back face color, let's just choose a different color because uh, red is a little bit too intense. But for now, we don't really need it. Uh, for now, we don't really need it. We were using insets, so that's what we're going to keep on using. Um, cell edge loop. There we go. Uh, sub D tools, and let's see. Chamfer, where's chamfer? Bevel mesh or sub D. So that's not chamfer, that's bevel. I need to remember that. Um, so it kind of fillets. Yeah, it fillets it. I don't want it to fillet it. Segments three, no. Uh, I need se two segments. Yeah, I do need two segments and offset mode absolute. What's that? Proportional. Ah, yes, 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 yes. That's uh, we, we use absolute mode here and straightness. What, what does one mean? Oh, one just means that it's going to be perfectly straight edge while zero means that it's going to um, try and work as a fillet so one works straightness zero works as a fillet straightness one works as a chamfer um, there's a problem with that I don't want any of those <laughs> I actually just want it to be um, Crap. I just want it to be uh, 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 the corner to stay where it is. So let's let's think about this. What if it's proportional? So uh, that that doesn't care. Keep creases. No. No, that doesn't care. But what if we what if we say that this edge loop right here, cell edge loop here. What if we say that this is a crease, right? And then we uh, sell, oh my God, edge loop again, and we use the bevel and keep creases. If that's turned on, that's going to work. Ah, okay, got it. So that's going to do that. No. Okay. Um, that didn't work. Let's do it the long way around then. Sell edge loop, insert edge. Mm, do we specify it? Is it possible to specify it? 0 0.1. What will this do? Ah, huh, okay. So that's proportional. That's good to know. So this becomes sharper. That's good. I think. <laughs> um, and what if we... Right now I'm just trying to figure out a, a good look for, for this particular um, car. Uh, for, for this particular grill, right? So I'm just testing out different options on it. So we have that. Uh, let's crease it. Tab. Uh, doesn't seem like crease does anything here. Why is that? I need this and this to be straight and it's not straight and it's not straight because maybe this needs to be straight as well. Crease it. So it still rounds off. Ah, okay. So it's going to round off like that. So we can't really, oops, we can't really crease it. But that's fine, I think. 
because we can chamfer. Okay, so let's do it this way. Uh, this edge and this edge, we select these two edges and we use bevel on them. And we will use a very small bevel um, with two segments. So something like something like that. That's how it bevels. Ah, uh, crap! But here, then it makes um, starts making a a whole lot of trouble. We will need to clean the topology here then, because this becomes an N-gon, and we really hate N-gons, by the way. Um, boom, boom, boom. Is there a way of how to solve this without the N-gons? Oh, I know. Well, I have, a, have an idea. So let's delete these edges for now. Let's open it up. So this is deleted and this is how it's gonna work. Okay, that's good. And then we still select the edge loop. And now it doesn't recognize it as an edge loop anymore because of our chamfer, shit. Okay, chat, time to shine. Any suggestions? What I want to do is I want to make this uh, whole crisp more crisp, but at the same time, I want to keep the continuity. Um, like keep the polygonal continuity uh, as, as nice as possible. So that chamfer introduces a tri triangular segment, which is crap. I don't want triangular segments. Um, or actually it's not triangular, but it's a very crappy rectangular segment. Uh, I still don't want them. So let's undo it all. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, so we do that first. And also for the inside. No, the inside doesn't doesn't recognize edge loops. Okay, so we do that first. Enter. Then we do insert edge. And we say 0 point, uh, 0 0.2. Like that. It's going to work like this. Then we... Mm-hmm. If I do chamfer with one segment and add creases to the edges. Mm. Yeah, that was my thought as well. Uh, but the problem is that a chamfer, when I make a chamfer, it creates a really, really crappy topology on the corner, which I really don't want to do. I would prefer that well, maybe it's impossible to have it without the crappy topology. Let's try. Let's try one more one more thing, um, and we then we'll see. Select the bag, delete the chamfer. Select the bag, delete the chamfer. Yeah, um, <laughs> way ahead of you. Went back a few steps already. Uh, so, edge loop. <clears throat> Okay, so we have that, those four. Insert edge. Um, and let's just insert it by eye, so to say, like that. How does it look like? That looks like crap, but it's better. Yeah, it's definitely better, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's way sharper than it was. It's still, uh, you know, not 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 perfect, but it's definitely 
definitely definitely better but now the tricky bit is the, the these chamfers so i think if now i ch uh, chamfer no uh, not chamfer uh, the the bevel how is it called bevel yes if I bevel this edge, like that, <sighs> yeah, that's that's what I was afraid of. Um, just breaks down completely. Mm -hmm. But can we then just crease it though? Hmm. Can we add, use this as a crease? No, the, the answer is definitely not. <laughs> uh, so we can't crease it there. Hmm. Hmm. It's so clean, but it's not what I want. We are super close now with this. The only thing that I don't... Well, for, for this stage at least. The only thing that I don't want now is that um, roundness. How round it is. Everything else we can uh, we can fix the proportion afterwards and make it nice, but the roundness of it, I really don't don't like. Insert edge inside and fix the end guns outside the grill. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's that's probably the the way to go, isn't it? That's going to be a shit ton of uh, of M guns, though, uh, and all of the valances will be messed up. But that's probably what we need to do, right? The question is then: Do we do it now or do we do it later when we will be working with more, um, with deeper resolution, or do we just keep the grill now? Maybe we do keep the grill now and then we start inserting the edges later, later down the line. Yeah, let let's do that. So, mm -hmm. so then, let me do one last thing here. Um, from here, I want this to be... That looks good, right? Yeah, that looks good. So I want this to be like that, and I will just select these two lines, uh, these three lines actually, and move them from this point to the intersection point here. No, actually to intersection point here. Like that. Hit tab. Can't really see a, a change here, of course. But we know we know that it's there. We know that it's there. Um, same thing here. Bam, bam, move. Nope. Bam, move. Um, from, 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 from. No, wait. Uh, 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 pfft, messed up. Uh, it's actually from this point. There we go. Okay, that's why I was uh, um, I was confused. There we go. So that that goes there. Then we have. 
that that and that edge which goes bam here then we have that that and oh my god this is a little bit messy but that's fine that edge which goes here yeah that's getting better um and yeah the same thing for for the bottom ones from here up 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 nope nope from here move here there we go and now it's gonna be the tricky one or actually maybe we should do it in a more controlled fashion it's gonna take longer but at least i know that i will not make a mistake bam here and here okay and last one pam 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 move from here to intersection here and then pam pam oh. come on pam 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 move from here to intersection here good yeah that's better that is better Ugh. so we have messed around quite a bit with the grill uh for now i'm gonna keep it uh as it is maybe i could One last try. What if uh, this edge, this edge, this, 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 and up, 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 up. this, 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 and this whole edge, and this, this, and this, and this whole edge, as well as the whole damn back, is actually a crease. And then we tab it okay got it so then it does indeed like like cr actually crease it but it messes up um we do um okay but we are close so what if we remove remove crease from these two edges and only leave them here then the smoothing of it messes it up so do we actually need to crease? Then it's kind of forcing us to keep keep creasing it, right? Yeah, it seems like it's just then forcing us to keep keep creasing it over and over again uh, until we kind of loop around the whole car. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty close, but it's still um, no still a no okay we'll we'll come back to this uh we'll come back to this layer to solve it okay so we have that area right here we have the side of the car that's doing its thing we have the back of the car and we added a little bit of mesoscale but that's not you know that's not too much there's that crease there that I really don't like. So maybe we could... Mm, do we add something here to mitigate that? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, so cell edge loop. Probably this one. Oh, that's not an edge loop anymore, is it? All right, so are you an edge loop then? No, you're not. Okay, good to know. So that. 
insert edge and it will not let us insert an edge here okay so an edge loop is actually cell edge loop this one here together with this this ah understood that's why it's freaking out okay so how do we add edges here <laughs> okay let's do it this way and by this way i mean keep thinking about it <laughs> okay uh insert edge select edge from loop so this insert and we kind of move it somewhat close to the side and just look how it works that's fine we'll need to divide this up of course later on but for now this is fine um and then we need to insert edge again from oh yeah that's good from the side uh yeah and move it back until it's kind of close to here like that one more edge this time we need to be very precise and by precise i mean not hit the mark by like a millimeter um let's just kind of lie about it a bit shh, shh, no one sees it shh. thank god i'm not live streaming or else this would be a very boring portion of the live stream um insert edge again Ooh, 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 what ooh, ooh, that's a new one defects are marked with dots and defect components are selected have you seen this one before this error before that's a new one um how can we solve it we don't know does anything okay let, let's try let, let's try to force it to give us that same error again um insert edge bam okay invalid input geometry defects are marked with dots and defect that components are selected so can i move those components yes i can and those components are basically points okay good to know um let me is it because these are duplicate points because these are duplicate points aren't they yes they are okay so let's do weld vertices not weld vertices um align vertices distance to adjust one millimeter no vertices were adjusted that's great are these still double yes they are still double okay that's that's uh wonderful wonderful to know um let's select those points and choose that that new how is that new tool called where it kind of merges the points together oh crap the coffee is gone um mesh tools stitch is it stitch i think it's stitch yeah go away yeah Let's try stitch. Select second set of edges. This. Enter. Defects are marked with dots. Just breathe. Everything is gonna be okay. Delete that. Delete that. Okay. 
delete that. Loft, not loft, but sub D loft. Or actually, yeah, let's do it this way. Um, delete all of that. Delete that. Eh, that, 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 that. Come on. <laughs> that, 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 that. And, and you that get deleted. Perfect. Um, that is gonna be just fine, I think. And now let's see can we sub D loft, sub D loft. Select curves and boundary edge chains in order to loft. Okay, this and this. Enter. Uh, join. Don't smooth. Corners. Or can uh, maybe smooth, I don't know, but definitely join. Um, add segments. I will need like four, I think, for this to work. Hit OK. Now my car is inside out, but that's fine. Do we just... Is it possible to loft it like... <sighs> Come on, click, 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 okay. And click, click. Click, 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 and click. Come on. Let's see how smart Rhino actually is, if it can guess what I'm thinking. Uh, sub D loft. Rhino is smart. Corners. Join, don't smooth. Uh, Creases, closed, not closed. Uh, natural shape segments adjusted. Uh, crap. <laughs> Corner, uh, come on. Just. Oh, and here I can adjust it, but it smooths it out. Like a deck. But what if we, maybe if we just kind of tell it to, to just do it and hit OK. Yeah, yeah, OK. So it's just the display. Whew, that's good. That's good. That's of course creased now, but that's fine. That's uh, solvable. So we are slowly restitching the shape back to normal. Now we need to solve the end of it. Well, this will definitely loft together. This and that with oh, uh, sub D loft, I mean, of course this and that um, it would be nice if Rhino actually remembered my settings uh, please McNeil please just please do it uh, hit OK Whew. quick question for everyone watching What the heck happened to the car? Topology happened. Rhino didn't want to do what I wanted to do, what I wanted it to do. Um, so I kind of am rebuilding the front of it so that it's, it's, it's nice and has proper edge loops <clears throat> all, all over. 
It's gonna be fine, I promise. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> it should be fine. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry. That surface right there, I'm not sure about it. This this guy right here, I think it's it, it shouldn't be there. Or maybe it should. Crap. Oh right, the Rhino uh, working with SubD in Rhino and in Blender. Right now in Blender it's better. That's no denying it. Much much better. But and, and more convenient to use. But in Blender you don't get NURBS output. And here in Rhino you do get an a NURBS output. Uh, and NURBS is infinite in resolution, meaning that for manufacturing purposes it makes sense to work with Rhino. But if you're just like interested in video game uh, character design or design for uh, movies, movies, then Blender I think is still better. Unless you want to be like uh, Vitaly Bulgarov. Do you guys know about Vitaly? Let's, let's take a break, because I need to think about it. And instead, let's take a look at just a second. Mm, how do I? Just a second. Add a window capture, yes, as per usual, and now we will find that website here. There we go, hit OK. Uh, it's way too big, so we make it smaller. Smaller. Close that. So that's Vitaly. Um, Vitaly is someone that I look up to in terms of uh, how he models and what he what he's able to do. And I believe you can, yeah, you can find all of the games and movies that he's worked on here. But the, the, the interesting bit is not the, the, the movies that he's worked on, but actually the surgery robots that he's done, right? So he worked on surgery robots, he worked on, um, can we find it? Uh, Vitaly Bulgarov uh, Mech. So he actually worked on these mech suits in Korea that actually are used by, by, by people, like bipedal mech suits that you can get into. And like he worked with engineers and so on. So in terms of CAD modeling, uh, and, and like concept art when it comes down to um, CAD, I think he's the best in the industry uh, in, in that regard. Uh, let's just see some of his works. Like Ghost in the Shell stuff is just insane, what he did there, um, if it loads up for me. Hello, load? There we go. And by the way, all of this was uh, actually manufactured, right? So it's not just uh, pretty, pretty images. So layers on top of layers on top of layers of, of this kind of a CAD goodness, so to say. So nice, so freaking nice. 
So if 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 um, wait, I just want to find the the thing that uh, that inspired me the most. Oh, damn it! Where is it? No, oh, there, there, there it is. There it is. Or is it that one? Doesn't matter. So all of this was 3D printed, and they actually used it in the movie as a mannequin, right? Uh, all, all of the parts and so on were CNC milled, 3D printed, and they, they actually, actually used it in the movie, which is, holy crap, that's, that's insane. Anyway, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me turn this off. Bam, we're back here. Minimize that. There we go. Back to Rhino. And back, <laughs> after looking some, some goodness from Vitaly, we're back to our shitty, shitty car model. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be fine. When, once we start adding details, it's gonna start looking real good, real fast. But for now, we're stuck with... We're stuck with what it is. And it's not... Not the prettiest. Let's, let's, let's tell it as it is. It's not the prettiest now. Um, let's think. So does this loft with this? Let's try. Sub... Sub the, uh, sub the loft from here to here, closed, not closed, uh, corners, join it in, seems like it would make a nice fit if we give it like three segments. But then we have a problem with this strip here, this strip of polygons here that, that doesn't fit. So we need to be very careful about this. Basically what we have right now is we have one extra strip of polygons that we have no, absolutely no idea how to deal with. Um, so my thought is My thought is actually ch uh, selecting all of this. Oh, come on. Because there is that strip here, so it's going down. Fuck. Uh, so there's only a single polygon missing here, and then we, we would be good to go. Could we, <clears throat> could we delete this? Bear with me for a second. Delete this, duplicate edge, uh, duplicate this edge and duplicate that edge here. Um, and for now, let's just have these two curves here and just lock them. So those are our helper curves. Um, and then, can you dissolve faces? I don't know. Dissolve. No, uh, but wait, dissolve means that everything kind of connects into one, converges into one point, right? Uh, yes, you can with uh, stitch. You can do that. Hello back to Portugal. I heard that uh, it was quite a cold... Uh, called day yesterday in Portugal. Cars got frozen. <laughs> um, so what was I doing? Oh, right, right. Uh, so this, this polygon right here, I need to get rid of it. And actually for now, let's just do it this way. Bam, bam. There we go. Will be, will be easier. Okay, so we have that, and then I will take this edge right here, and I will move vertical, 
move it down to this vertex here. Okay. This is uh, becoming a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, we will persevere. We will persevere. Uh, then I need to extrude, um, or maybe loft. Let's just loft, perhaps. Or do we extrude? <laughs> There's a lot of stitching. No, for now let's um, let's unlock and let's loft sub D. Ugh. Not loft uh, sub D loft. Let's sub D loft this and this, and it doesn't loft corners, creases. Okay. It does loft. Mm -hmm. Join it. Hit OK. Flip it around. Okay, so we have that kind of topology going on. That's great. And then we need this to go up, probably, right? Yeah move from here to here this is something that i like to call stitching <laughs> and it's something that i hate quite a bit oh hello hello to china back to china welcome let us uh, sub the loft these two lines creases corners join okay flip it around now we can indeed loft these two edges here uh, not not just regular loft but uh, sub d loft come on uh, edit redo tab sub d loft from here to here like that and now we can see corners three or, or four divisions join it in bam okay we're moving up in the world a little bit and netherlands are here hello welcome it's nice to see that uh, the community is kind of growing, right? And then we're uh, getting people from all over the world. It's lovely. Lovely. Okay. So we have that. And now let's think about this. So we can definitely loft. Um, we can definitely loft this sub-D segment with this sub-D segment here. Uh, not loft, uh, sub-D loft. This sub-D segment edge here with this edge here with according to corners and join it in. Okay, flip. And then the biggest issue is here. Do I use alias? Uh, no, that's um, that's a big boy toy. I don't use big boy toys. That's a, that's a program that's whew, a bit too 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 much for me. I barely use SolidWorks, so alias is maybe maybe someday, but uh, that day is not today. Okay, let's draw a line like that and then grab 
grab that little point there and move it and snap it perpendicular to the line to straighten out this this particular edge okay we don't need that actually cell crv let's get rid of the curves okay so now we have we will have this area right here which we will be able to extrude mm. Um, I, I assume you're asking how do I switch between the soft mode, like soft display mode and the flat display mode, right? Uh, because I, here I can also edit it, right? I can still take the point and move it, it's just that I... No, no, really no, don't like it. Um, it's tab, it's just a tab button that does that. Okay. Um, Let's see what kind of tools we can use for this. Insert point to mesh or sub D. Okay, select mesh, okay. And I can just insert the point. Oh, okay, understood. So no, uh, we don't need that. Sub D loved. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are bored out of your minds right now, uh, check this out. If I have, uh, Pentagon, or actually hexagon would be better. If I have a hexagon, six, like that, and I kind of take it and copy, copy, copy. You know, I have some 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 fun things going on here, and I can rotate, um, or rather, rotate three D. Let's say this is uh, 45 degrees, and I will rotate this one. Um, yeah, let's say this one is also 45, or, or let's do 90 degrees, doesn't matter. 90 degrees, and then, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll just kind of connect a few, uh, a few of them, like so. There, and maybe this edge connects here, doesn't matter. I'll select all of these right, uh, shapes, I'll explode them, and some of them will be du duplicate shapes, for instance, here, like, I will have two curves, so I'll just type in cell dupe, select duplicates, enter, and hit delete, so to get rid of all of the duplicates. What if you want to pipe them, right? Usually, you will just kind of go and type in pipe, or, or rather, select all of them, type in pipe, and pray. But that's not gonna work, right? <clears throat> if I were to try and pipe them um, with radius of, let's say, 50 or 20, you know, not the best, especially in the connections. Everything is intersecting and everything is shit, right? Um, and also, you can't really join this up properly. With Rhino 7 and SubD tools, there is the SubD tools. There is the pipe, uh, multi-pipe object uh, or option tool. If I select all of these, I choose SubD multi-pipe and radius pipe radius. We use 20, right? I think we use 20. So radius 20. Enter. Cap ends uh, off. Doesn't matter. There is no ends here. Hit enter. Divisions, uh, zero for smooth curves. I have no idea what that means. Uh, let's try zero. I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna wait a second to see the reactions from chat. <laughs> Single object, by the way. Yeah, it's uh, so great. 
I really, really, really like this one. Anyway, so that's uh, that's something for people who were bored looking at me cleaning up the, the mess here. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be... Um, you know, with, with all, all of these parametric tools and sub modeling tools, that's the least that I could do. It's uh, make uh, <laughs> like run soothing music to try and accommodate like co complex um, topics. Right? So at least you don't freak out. <laughs> okay, let us try and stitch this bad boy together. So I'll select this edge loop here somehow. Uh, let's try it like so. No, that's not how. Uh, let's just do a selection uh, filter edges and just click, shift, click, 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 click. There we go. And select this edge loop here. Click, 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 click. And there we go. Let's see, this should be, should be fine, right? Should be fine, we'll see. Uh, sub D loft. Mm, that's not good. Okay, first of all, corners fixed. And let's see what's happening. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Shit. We have one too many points. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Do we just add? Oh, that's because we added um, a, a polygon there. Okay, that's, that's actually not that bad. Because all we need to do is just add an additional edge loop here. And it should solve it. Hopefully. So wait, this will connect with the top, this will connect with this, this with this, this with... Uh. Let's do it one by one. Uh, sub D loft. Just a second chat, I'll, I'll read what you wrote. Uh, that is busy. Um, Two, three, join. Okay. Again, this and this. One, two, three. Corners, join. Okay. Um, McNeil, if you're watching, please, please make it so that Subdi Loft remembers. Or either give it an option, you know, a, a tick mark, remember options. Because this is uh, really annoying. One, two, three. Okay. Then these guys will loft properly. Corners. One, two, three. Join. Okay. This and this will loft properly. One, two, three, join, corners. This and this. Wait, what? It, it, it does loft properly. I just need to do it one by one. Okay, come on. That's unfair. That's stupid. Join, one, two, three, corners, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So now the bottom is going to be problematic. But I think that's going to be the only part uh, which is problematic. And to fix it, we just need to add one additional loop, right? Or a triangle. So basically the problem is that here it, it makes a triangle. Like that. It makes a triangle here. That's that's the issue. Um, doesn't I think bridge um, bridge bridge wait uh, bridge pum 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 let's say these with one two three up select first set of edges surfaces to bridge this 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 and that enter and then this 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 and that enter um and oh yeah wait bridge does have segments in between I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I use loft and not bridge. Yeah, because you can do, uh, add segments. That's good. Um, I think last time I used bridge. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's hit OK there. And then we have this triangle thing here, which is a little bit of a mess. And we will need to figure out how to fix it. Or do we keep that a triangle here? Not sure. Maybe we make a triangle here instead. Let's try to... Okay, let, let, let's just see how it's going to smooth out if I select Ah, yes, yes, yes. If I select this point, this point, and choose to stitch those points together. Bam. And then tab. Mm. Ah, yeah, and remove all of the creases. Um, let's just do it this way. Remove crease. Tab. So it's gonna do that. Maybe that's not a problem. At least it doesn't seem like it's a problem. Doesn't look nice though. And also if this moves away, it's gonna be it's gonna become a problem. So can I add a loop here? here and then oh man that's so many so many questions so many questions that i have uh, important thing for you viewers maybe somebody already told you you don't see the floating windows of options rhino shows you oh no no one told me um come on viewers you can do better. So you don't see when I do a loft, for instance, you don't see a menu up here. OBS, why are you being a dick? And also, more importantly, how can we solve it? Yeah, now I know, now I know. I'm getting used to the streaming shenanigans here. Um, do we need it though? Yeah, we do, we do. Okay, so let's do this. Bam. Um, loft options. Okay. Bam. 
I don't know. I'll, I'll just move it here. So the shitty part is... Oh, actually, can I just... Eh, no. Can I crop myself? No, I can't. Uh, the shitty part is that... Well, nope, nope, come back. Is that I can't really... hide this. So when I close the loft options, that window will disappear. That's good. But what about then sub D loft? Do I need to... Oops. No, 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 no. Uh, sub D loft uh, between you two. So this one, will this one appear? Of course not. Okay, cool. Uh, let's fix it then. Bam. That. Just give me 30 seconds and we will have it. Um, sub the loft. There we go. Big boy. Big boy. There we go. And what's this? This matter. Okay, so now when I change the settings, you should be able to see it. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Okay, let's let's see, let's see, let's let's think about this for for a second now. Here, I want. An additional loop so what I'm gonna do is I will duplicate edge I will get these two edges here I will move vertical move them down to here to this vertex I will uh, sub the loft between this and this nope 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 not explode explode sub the loft or, or was it bridge but can I can I bridge between an edge and that? No, I can't. So you can't bridge between an edge and a curve. That sucks. Uh, sub the loft. Between this edge right here and this curve right here. Uh, creases on uh, join. Okay. And now I can bridge between here and here. Yes, right, forgot. Uh, here, here, enter, here, here, enter. There we go. Okay. Bam. Super. Works. Works, 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 works. Just works. Just works. Is the sub D on the Rhino honestly worth it? It's difficult to adapt to commands that are not ready and do not help you plan quickly compared to my or Max. Um, right now, as it is right now, it's not great. The, the user experience, like I am struggling with it a bit. So the user experience uh, of, of Rhino right now is not great. Of sorry, of sub D portion of Rhino, but it is still, you can get away still with a lot of, you know, uh, pretty, pretty um, complex geometries uh, and, and working with them. Is it, is Maya better or is uh, Blender better? Yeah, yeah, right now it is, but this is the first stage like the, the the first iteration of Rhino's own sub D tools, so I think they will get as good as Maya or Blender uh, in the long run. Right now, as for the first stage, I think it's fine. I, I think it's re, re, like you can you can do everything you want to do. It only takes a much longer time than it would in. In, in, in Maya or in Blender. And I'm trying, for, for instance, right now, I'm trying to remember how the hell did they call a mirror tool for sub D. 
and I can't for the life of me either find it here in the settings. Like uh, these are super shitty icons, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, these icons are terrible. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing. And the naming conventions is not great. Most of it comes from AutoCAD, I know, but... There it is. Reflect, okay, so it's reflect. Remember kids, reflect is same thing as mirror, only for sub-D geometries. Well, with additional functionality. Uh, pick a point on the side to keep here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have that. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I do want to crease it. Uh, crease this though. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, cell edge loop. Will it let me select it? Select this bad boy as an edge loop? No, it doesn't. <sighs> Hate it. Even though this is clearly an edge loop. Well, whatever. Um, so we have that, and I will say that this needs to be a crease. Bam. A bit nicer, you know. So this is flat, that's nice. This is a little bit more crisp than it was before, and the topology is now great. Okay, we solved it. We re-stitched re it together. Sub-D on SketchUp, I didn't even know that uh, that, that SketchUp has Sub-D. <laughs> That's good for SketchUp, honestly. Like, really good for SketchUp. Oh wait, is that a crease? Or is it just curves? Yeah, it's just curves, it's just me. Cell CRV. Delete. Okie dokie. So we have that. Um, I want to shape this further, so let's move this in, so this goes in, or rather, let's take these two curves, move them in like that, maybe a bit too much, like that, and then rotate 3D. Rotate these two curves around this hinge right here. Uh, let's turn on, uh, turn off ortho and just rotate them just a tiny bit. Uh, actually snapping, I'll turn that off as well. Or, or do we rotate them a, a lot? A lot seems to be a bit too much, right? No, just a tiny bit. Bam. So we add one more hiccup here. That hiccup is going to get a chamfer or a bevel, as they call it these days. Let's just see how a bevel would work. Oof. Okay, it's not gonna get a bevel. <laughs> it doesn't deserve a bevel. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> but oh, actually, this is where I will not show you how inset works. Yeah, shit. Wanted to show you, but uh, no, I'm not not gonna show you. <laughs> uh, yikes. The reason why I'm not going to show you how inset works is because uh, I, I, I still need to kind of work with the mirror plane here. Uh, so I need to work with these both polygons at the same time. Um, so I will be extruding minus 1000, scaling, you know, that the whole Mambo jumbo thing, 0.8. Uh, I think I messed up. Wait, let me try again. Scale, 
there we go that that seems better back extrude no uh, not extrude uh, scale 1d from midpoint oh yeah snapping needs to be turned on from here to here and this one is going to be super thin so just 10 like that hmm maybe that's a little bit too thin okay let's not do 10 um, let's do scale 1d let's do zero oh let's do 15 yeah that's better bam extrude sub d inwards by not a lot by like a hundred like 10 centimeters enter okay we get a, an additional thing <laughs> and this thing is going to be chamfered this time i'll select this edge i'll choose to chamfer it oh no uh, not chamfer goddamn the other word bevel bevel edges to bevel this 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 or can i okay what would happen if i bevel all of the edges at the same time well it doesn't let me that's that's the first thing there we go okay uh enter just a tiny bit so i will actually give it three segments what the hell is going on with the on the inside so offset mode proportional i'll use proportion proportional to so that it doesn't break but it still breaks uh creep keep creases no straightness one okay understood so if i try to bevel it well maybe that's the correct way of how it's you know how it should bevel but but you know no not not great doesn't look that good let's try one more time uh wireframe view oh music hello music where, where are you um shall we change our genre to something more bouncy uh, music 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 um let's go for dark beats that's not mm, i don't like it mm -hmm, sure I'll, I'll go to the view Okay, let's just, uh, let, let's not. What the hell is 8D music? Do you mean 8-bit? <laughs> um, right, so, ghosted view. Ghosted, there we go. <laughs> some lithuanians in the chat as well okay so that's how it looks like right now um i will what i was uh i, I was i was working on all oh, right i was working on this this area right here and the chamfer the bevel 
the bevel was messing up, but maybe we can still fix it. Um, if we select, come on. Select. So apparently you can only select the, uh, an edge that's behind the face uh, in, in a wireframe view. Ghosted view doesn't let you do that. So, okay, bevel, segments, only two segments, please. Or how does one segment bevel look like? Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what I actually that's what I actually want. Okay, so that's a bevel. Bam. Tab. Okay, that's that's not 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 that bad. And then we need to. We need to think. <laughs> we need. What we need to do is we need to think. Um, we take, we take this edge, this edge, and this edge, as well as this one, and then this, 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 and this. Also, yeah. For now, let's just use these edges, and and actually also this and this, and we will bevel them. Or maybe we don't need to bevel these edges here. No, we do, we do. <sighs> Wait, my, my phone is doing weird stuff. Hmm, okay. Um, so we have that. And then can I just enter and we just do a small, without any snapping, we just do a small, small bevel here. Bam, like that. Oh man, let's check it out. Emap. Um, Emap. We use True Sphere to check it. That's crisp, isn't it? Second. Turntable. Turntable. So the side is completely flat as we want it. The back, the ass is nice. Um, the front is okay. And the grill is also continuous. I don't see any any issues. Yeah, there's a few there, but that's just a singularity, that's not a problem. Wait, let me change this to fluorescent tube. Yeah, I think we, we nailed it. I think we... We managed to make a proper crease here. Whew, that was actually hard. <laughs> that was actually hard to do, but we did it. Okay, since we did it, we will be able to crease all of this as well, right? But do we crease it now? That's the question. Because there's still stuff that I want to do. 
and uh, I want to keep it as low resolution as possible. Also, that's a triangle right there. Maybe that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's do. Actually, let's finish for today. What do you think? Let's finish up. Um, how long have I have I been on? Um, wait. Yes. Turntable. Uh, no. Uh, the 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 tab. Emap. Bam. Uh, true sphere no you guys like arches I think or or, or the sunset one right um, then let's do a turntable and now let me just check how long have I been on hmm I don't see it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, whoa, that's that's almost four hours. Okay, okay. So this is um, this is this is this is um, the end of it. I think for for today. Um, yeah, time flies when you're having fun or when you're struggling with the freaking <laughs> tool. <laughs> um, but it, 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 we did eventually manage to make it work. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. That's not good. Shit. Okay, uh, so we're not done. We are gonna work on this some more. Yay. Um, do I use ZBrush? No, no, I don't. Uh, for sculpting, I use Blender. <laughs> Just as we thought that we managed to, to solve it. I wonder why, why? 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 That's a midpoint. That's a midpoint. What if we take these two points here and scale one D? Um, with what if we scale them up? Ah, that's the problem. Yeah, that's probably... See how far away they are being pushed in? That's... that's the problem. Okay, how do we solve that problem then? We need more... divisions here. Crap, so we do actually need to insert a ton. Okay. Let's do it properly. Fine. Pow, pow, pow. Insert edge. We will just insert it here. And then we select, or rather, no. Um, like that, like that, insert edge, oh it just lets us insert it, insert it here, no, I, I want to insert it other way around, like that, yes, perfect, um, so we do something like this, here, I know that I'm making end guns, don't worry about that, for now or maybe do worry about that for now <laughs> mm 
but we do need to work work this out right okay how does the edge loop look like um cell edge loop bam okay there's no edge loop there there is a small edge loop there it does recognize that part as an edge loop there okay so where can we put all of the crap merge the edge merge the edge which edge i don't know i don't know which edge you're talking about i'm i'm thinking how to not make a bunch of triangles early on and that's it's not right now a problem okay I think I have a strategy. So we select this edge here, and then our shitty geometry will go in here and here and will be eaten up. So we select that, we say insert edge, and we insert it here like that tab okay that's much more you know that that is the edge which is extra ah yes uh, I, I do understand what you mean but um, I don't know that that's not the biggest problem right now the biggest problem is me not being able to um to create proper edge loops here because i'm, I'm quite limited on, on tools i'm quite limited on tools so i need uh, i'm, I'm kind of struggling with the edge loops but i think yeah okay so we can work with it like that and that's a pretty sharp edge but then we need to work this one out but i don't think that's gonna be a problem all we need to do is just select these two n-gons get rid of them uh loft uh, or, or or bridge bridge not bride uh bridge <laughs> between this edge and this edge yeah uh, or rather between this edge enter and this edge enter bridges ends need to be disjoint okay so it's it's being a little dick uh sub d the loft then between this and this doesn't let me do that huh you and you just loft you can't okay that's nice but you can loft that <laughs> cup of tea or coffee i'll take one once i'm done um once i'm done streaming okay so we have that that's fine and then we can just kind of bridge those two areas there Fine. Oh, actually, I know. Um, we can uh, even do something even fancier. Bridge between... Bridge between... <laughs> come on. Bridge between this edge and this edge. yo yo rhino come on bridge this and enter this enter enter this why okay there we go segments two segments hit okay uh get that point 
move it in. And that's a that's not a triangle anymore. Which I have no idea if that's good or not, but at least it means that we can now uh, bridge that with select second set of edge edges or loops. There we go. And we can bridge it properly like that. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't smooth out that nice, but hmm, maybe we should keep it as a triangle. Okay, let's keep it as a triangle. <sighs> you and you need to be bridged. You and you need to be bridged. like a way of how to just create single sub deface okay you pow pow enter and then pow pow uh, why can't I just click there hello vertex yes there we go no that's the wrong ver vertex Vertex, vertex, yes, vertex, vertex. Okay, good. So we have these, and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if it's possible to take these and join them together. Yes, it's possible. Okay, and what about these two? Enter. Yes, this. Okay, so that that works. I will need to fix that, but that's fine. Uh, which means that I can just simply click, click, click here, join, enter. Okay, that's how it looks like. I think it looks better than it looked before. And this is now a nice edge, a, a much better edge than here. Um, Let's, let's fix the, the mirroring though. Come on, reflect, enter, enter. Oh yeah, uh, that. Select sub the objects. I select them. The start of reflection plane. Oh, okay, so it doesn't remember uh, what kind of reflection plane I used before. That's fine. Uh, reflection plane is going to be X axis, pick a point on the side to keep this, uh, this side, snap to reflection plane, automatic, yes. Tab. Okay. Damn, that was a long, long <laughs> trip. But we managed it. Is there any chance or possibility to contact you about IAAC? I would have a few questions. I'm interested about starting the courses about computational designs. Uh, why, why don't you just contact them? I, I, I don't work with IAAC. It's a good school. I went there um, for, for, for a few like, visits with my students. Um, we, we, we go to kind of look at their fab lab, um, so it's a good school. Other than that, uh, I don't know what, 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 what to tell you about it. They have really nice publications, like a set of publications. Okay. Do we call it a day? I think we call it a day. I'm getting tired. Or do we work on this a bit more? Maybe just a little bit. Just those two lines uh, or polygons could do that. Mm, or not. Or, 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 or they could not do that. <laughs> Um, cause that looks ridiculous. 
I think next time uh, we will be working on the glass. And I don't know when the next time is gonna be, probably. I do have a lot of work to do for, for the next few days. Is it Thursday right now? Yeah, it's Thursday. Crap, it's the end of the week now. Yeah, so th that's definitely not gonna happen. So next stream is gonna be probably on Monday. Um, let me just check my calendar to let you know when to kind of tune in if, if you want to see it live. I will have the recordings here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I will have the recordings available. Um, uploaded to YouTube so that you can follow along. Um, it's going to be earlier. Yeah, I, I am going to stream next Monday coming Monday, but it is going to be um, earlier. Yeah, uh, er earlier than, than, than today. Do I have a website for my models? No, um, actually, since, you, since you're asking, um, I do have all of, all of my models that I do on the live stream. Uh, are available for the Patreon supporters, right? So I, I do have like a, a 3D model of a donkey and, 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 and stuff like that. Make it wider in the car? I don't know, maybe. I don't like this portion of it. I think it looks stupid. But when I try to make it wider, um bam. <laughs> you know it it looks <laughs> no <laughs> just <laughs> no um maybe maybe i should make it narrower That also looks stupid. Okay, uh, we will need to think about that, that that part there. Maybe only this part needs to be wider. Mm. Or maybe this part. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay, that's that's too, <laughs> too much. So uh, wh what I was saying was that the, the, the Patreon supporters get um, get the 3D models for, for free, also the definitions, the grasshopper definitions, um, you know, all, all, all of the good stuff. But uh, for instance, stuff like this, like is something that I spend, uh, I'm planning on spending around 36, 48 hours on this car. Um, all in all, uh, something like this, I will not be uh, just giving away that model for uh, even for Patreon supporters. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is um, I've decided on this. I will be 3D printing out uh, out of my with my SLA printer um, ten versions of this 3D model, and I will hand paint them. Um, you know, just just like a any any kind of a model set. I will hand paint them, and um, I will probably have some sort of a collectibles giveaway for the you know top Patreon supporters or something like that. I still haven't decided on on that part. Yeah, just some sort of a locked collectibles edition thing. Um. And maybe down the line, in a, in a year or so, I'll just release the 3D model as well for, for the Patreon supporters, for everyone to, to kind of have it. But um, not sure about that. We'll see. Um, as an architecture student, how much should we know about the software before we should be able to include it in our CV? Oh, that's something that my students always ask me. And it's... Um, 
you should be able to um, navigate the the tools you should be able to know exactly which tool to use for which application right and by application i mean uh, in rhino if, if you're 3d modeling out a house right you need to be familiar for instance with loft and with all of these basic basic tools uh, to be able to include it in your your application if you just have been using rhino for uh for a week and you only know the user uh, the interface uh, i think you would be quite stressed in a office environment if you get you know invited to to partake in some sort of a actual project and someone actually asked you to kind of keep up the pace with rhino um so, so it, it is a tricky question, right? How, how much do you need to know to include it? Um, personally, I would say at least one project. You need to do at least one project with a piece of software uh, to include it in your, in your CV. Uh, my CV, when, when I was still a student, always had these kind of... Uh, um, star marks next to different software packages so for instance um, Maya only had two stars Rhino had five stars um, Blender had one star because I didn't know Blender <laughs> um, almost didn't know Blender 3ds Max had two stars right Archicad or Revit both of them had three stars um, so in doing so, you kind of showcase how much you know of each program, not just, you know, your, your level of expertise, your perceived level of expertise uh, on each individual program. I think that's the smartest way to go about it. Uh, do subdivertices vertices need to be altered anyway before 3D printing? Um, no, not at all. Like this thing right here, is a closed sub D object, right? So if I just type in two, uh, two NURBS, uh, two NURBS, right? Um, sub D options, uh, faces packed, extraordinary, vertex, GH1, yeah, that's fine. Bam. Now this thing right here is a NURBS polysurface, right? Which means that it can be meshed. Right. And this, if I check it, it's a closed polygon mesh. It can be 3D printed easily. So conversion between sub-D, NURBS, and mesh is super, super simple. No, I haven't worked there. Uh, it, you're talking about IAC, I assume. Uh, I only... Um, visited there like uh, three times, I think. So we had workshops and, and stuff like that uh, in IAEC. Uh, so when we visit with, with the students, uh, IAEC like creates a, some sort of a workshop, like rapid manufacturing or prototyping workshop. Um, but we, no, I haven't taught in, in IAEC at all. Right, uh, so this is email, uh, display, mesh wires off. You know, guess which one is a mesh, which one is a sub D, and which one is a poly surface. Um, they're, they're virtually the same, and uh, which means that, you know, it, the, the translation is very, very close. If I were to zoom in, maybe eventually I would see... Well, wrong. <laughs> uh, if I were to zoom in really close... Yeah, then you start seeing discrepancies in the continuity. Is it is the word discrepancies? Probably not. But other than that, yeah, completely 3D printable. Which wires? 
Actually, there's one thing that I want to check for, for next time when uh, we're going to uh, continue modeling on this. What if I have a box here? Um, just make it bigger, doesn't matter. Have a box. Can I just Boolean difference with the box? Yeah. So that's gonna be cool. <laughs> Guess how, guess, just guess how we are going to be adding details. <laughs> Boxes everywhere. <laughs> Boolean differencing. Next time we'll work on the front. Okay. Let's call it a day, right? Let's call it a day. Thank you. Oh, and uh, it's even a nice music uh, to to actually call it a day. I'm tired. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you on Monday. And the video, this this video is going to pop up. I don't know. Uh, probably tomorrow or something like that. YouTube takes some time in processing uh, tutorial uh, live stream videos. Rhino inside. Yes, pretty soon, but not too soon. I still want them to fix their mistakes and uh, fix their stuff before I can use Rhino inside properly. They are progressing though. They are progressing. Okay, I'm off and see you guys. Bye.